So I was about to build a new computer and then I got this in the mail. This is the ASRock Desk Mini GTX 1080. And you can get it in a few different flavors. You can get the 1080, the 1060, or just the RX. And that's gonna be the flavor of GPU. So this features a Z370 motherboard and it's a small micro STX. And it's smaller than any motherboard I've seen with this kind of power because it's got a regular, just a regular old socket 1151 and you can put whatever you like in there. We can put an i5 in there. Uh, you can put an i7 in there, up to six cores. And what we have in here is the i7 8700. Not the K, just the 8700. It's completely ridiculous what you can do with this. Mini PC with a 1080 and a full size 1151. I can almost not get over that. So you guys can compare this to a lot of the other mini PCs out there with this kind of horsepower. There's different ones from like Gigabyte and Zotac and you know, Asus and all those different companies. This is the smallest. And with the, the power that you can get out of it, I mean, <laughs> this will fit in my backpack. I'm gonna start taking this thing to LAN parties and I really don't wanna get rid of this thing. Like. It's been a while since I've been this excited uh, about a product that we've gotten into the studio. All right, let's go through some more of the specs. So you've got this tiny little board and you're gonna use SODIMs. You can get two, you know, space for two of those up to 3,200 megahertz uh, DDR4 with overclocking. Uh, and on the back, you'll see that we have room for four different M.2s. So you've got three full-size M.2. Um, and then one of those is gonna be specifically for like Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth module or something like that, but it's still an M.2. So we're putting the T-Force, uh, that's made by Team Group. Uh, we're gonna put in their 240 gigabyte M.2 in here. And then we've got uh, some of their elite uh, DDR4, the SODIMs, uh, 2400 megahertz on that. Um, and that's gonna be plenty fast, maybe even overclock that a little bit. We've got 16 gigabytes of that going in here. Now, taking this thing apart is extremely easy. There's a couple screws on the back. Uh, and two different well, four screws on the back you remove those then you remove two screws that are holding the uh, motherboard tray in place and the entire thing completely slides out making it super easy to build with you're not gonna have to worry about getting your hands on the inside of this little case or whatever it's just really easy to build with now we have two six gig uh, SATA ports on here and those are powered so you can fit two two and a half inch drives in here. You can get one that's mechanical. You can get uh, maybe a, another larger SSD or something like that and have plenty of room for all your games and stuff. So your MSN mo module already comes with a GTX 1080. I wish there were more uh, graphics card options out there. I wish you could just go out and buy them. It's not that easy to grab an MSN uh, graphics card, but this one comes with a 1080 or you can get the 1060. 1080 is where it's at, guys. Uh, also, as far as the back goes, we've got plenty of ports. For the GPU, you've got a mini display port, regular size display port, and HDMI. All those are gonna support 4K. And then you see all these USB options on the back. Everything on the back is USB 3.1, it's Gen 1. And we do have a, a Type C, but right here on the back, you can see it's just the standard Type A. And then we also have uh, HDMI, plus you've got Ethernet on the back. And there's your power plug. Uh, the power brick is quite substantial because you know it's not internal. The power supply is not internal. It's gonna be on the brick, but there's your uh, power port. Now on the front here, we have Type C and Type-A of the USB 3.1. We also have a headphone mic jack right there. So you guys see all that. And then the last thing over here on the side, we have two USB 2.0 ports. And I kind of like the inclusion of a 2.0 port because a lot of game controllers and stuff uh, seem to respond better with a USB 2.0. That's, I mean, it's backwards compatible. It works fine with 3.0, but I've just had uh, fewer issues with 2.0 personally. So that's anecdotal. Anyway, once you start playing some games with this thing, you're gonna be like, what the hell? And also something this size um, with a six core CPU like the 8700 or even the 8700K if you wanted to, is gonna be nice to take on the road as a mobile editing rig or you know something like that. Processing photos, uh, processing files, whatever. So you can do a lot with this from the productivity standpoint as well. We're mostly gonna be gaming with this. This is gonna be something I'm gonna be taking to, to LAN parties and everything like that. So let's jump in and try out some gaming benchmarks and just see how it runs. I run the Witcher 3. Wild Hunt, and uh, I'm running this at 4K, even though it's an ultra wide, so it's actually going off the top of the screen and everything. On ultra settings, it's running in probably the high 20s here in the middle of the city, so that's a bit too taxing. I'm gonna bring it down to what I play with at home. I think it's ridiculous to play on ultra settings. Let's just see how it plays on ultra wide. Holy moly. Now we're playing in the 30s. Much better on ultra wide. I turned a couple things down, turned the shadows to high instead of ultra. 
and uh, change the anti-aliasing on hair works. And battery smooth. All right, we're gonna do a 4K benchmark uh, with Tomb Raider, and the graphics are gonna be set to very high, everything all the way up, which is not how I would play this game because a lot of these settings you can turn down, but we'll just see what this can do. And I'll put it on 2X SSAA. Okay. Automatically crack open a glow stick in dark areas and then start a rave. Start a fucking rave. All right, so 4K results here. With everything turned up all the way just slightly under 30. Again, that's not how I would play the game. All right, here's how I would play it. I'm still gonna do a 4K just so you guys can see, but normally I would play it on the 3440 by 1440, but we'll do 4K just to show you. Um, and this is probably gonna look really good. All right, so just changing those few settings, we brought it up to 48.505. Most of you guys are gonna be playing this thing at 1080p or even 1440p. Some of you guys will be playing it at 4K. So just adjust your settings to that, I think 4K, um, with fewer filters actually looks better than 1080 with all the filters. So there you go Game plays like crazy on this tiny little thing. All right next up. All right, we're playing at 4k So it's got this ugly stretched thing. It's getting 4k and ultra 55 56 FPS, okay 4k on ultra let me just all the settings turned all the way up here again We're just running around in the middle of nowhere, but like this no one should play this way No one should play this game like this we got the FOV like that. So yeah, I'm gonna do something more sensible here and just show you guys what it would be like, even on Ultra on 1080. So we'll just bring it down to 1080. Okay, yeah. Okay, well over 100 FPS. Good grief. So yeah, this thing can absolutely game. And if you're gonna be playing this like a lot of the, the pros or people who care, you'll be turning the shadows down and everything like that. Oh, we got some good stuff here. Don't judge me for pressing F to pick up. Don't judge me. There, I'll do it the right way. You like that? All right, let's let's uh, let's get one more game and let's go a little crazy with that one. All right, so this is uh, Breath of the Wild and if you're gonna emulate the game, make sure you have the game, but that's what we're doing, we're emulating this. And I'm running this ultra wide. It looks beautiful, 3440 by 1440. I'm in one of the most difficult parts of the game to render and we're getting 50 to 60 FPS all the time. No stutters, no slowdowns. It's freaking brilliant. If you guys wanna see the exact graphic packs that I'm using, uh, 3440 by 1440, I'm using the FPS++, and then uh, Workaround Crash, and then just a couple of NVIDIA things, the Glitch Artifact Workaround and uh, Explosion Smoke. I've seen these two uh, do maybe a few things, but it doesn't really matter. So I guess you guys maybe wanna see this at 1080p, because that's what you, you know a lot of you guys are gonna be doing. It's not gonna run that much differently, but we'll do it anyway. I'm playing at 1080p, and the way this game runs, it's very reliant upon the CPU, so it's really nice to have the six core CPU going, but the frequency matters a lot. But we're really just getting 56, 50, the same FPS, right around 60. Go ahead and make it full screen here. Ah, get away from me. He's got a bigger weapon. It's running really well, may as well run it at 4K because it runs about the same speed on this machine. So yeah, get this thing and run it as high as you can. All right, this thing is insane. So yeah, you guys can see with the GTX 1080, it's pretty ridiculous. If you're gonna be playing most of your games at 1080p, you're gonna be just fine with the, with the GTX 1060, but I like this one for the ultra wide monitors, the 4K monitors and that sort of thing. Completely capable of playing everything in 4K. Um, no worries at all, also with VR. So if you've got a VR you know, setup, then this'll be just fine with that. It's gonna, you're gonna need a bigger backpack for that VR headset because the VR headset's probably bigger than this little guy. Now, one other thing I wanna mention are the thermals uh, on this. So the CPU gets up into the 80s, um, and that's not bad, uh, but that is higher than you're gonna get with like a water cooling setup and stuff. And uh, running it all day long in the 80s is not gonna break it, but it is going to make the fans ran up, ramp up a little bit more. The GPU runs in the 70s, so that's completely within acceptable spec, uh, but having it in the 80s and the fans ramping up, you are gonna notice that it does get over 40 decibels. Uh, in fact, if it's on the desk, it can be a little bit loud, even if you're wearing uh, headphones that are not closed. If you're wearing like open headphones, you can, you can really hear this thing. If you're wearing closed headphones, you're just fine. So I'm actually gonna recommend putting this farther away from where you're sitting or even on the floor or something like that. It's going to help a lot because it does generate a bit of heat and a bit of noise, but that's going to be the nature of something that's this compact. All right, for you guys who want to know the dimensions, it's 213 by 154.5 by 
and that's in uh, millimeters and then it's a two point liter that's the uh, actual size of the enclosure so if you were to fill it with liquid liquid don't fill it with liquid no please don't so yeah, if you guys have the uh, wi-fi kit as well that's 802.11 ac and you get that with this uh, so that'll come as an accessory you also get a support cd but uh, there's no cd rom on this thing so you're going to be going onto their website to download everything otherwise there's an rgb port on there if you wanted to install some rgb stuff on the inside you probably could mod it and make that happen but all in all this is the tiniest most powerfulest fastest most ridiculous pc that i've seen and uh, if anybody wants this they're gonna have to pry it out of my hands so you'll probably see me at a LAN party somewhere nearby uh, with this little guy uh, there's not a lot negative i have to say about it other than the fact that it produces noise and heat but that's the nature of something this size all right that's it guys let me know what you guys think in the comments and uh, be sure to grab one of our t-shirts appropriate LAN party shirt for this i didn't even mean to but yeah, and then grab uh, one of our mice as well. We'll see you guys over on the uh, website.